Hello and welcome back to this let's play of Into the Breach. This is uh, episode 6. Last episode we began with... and began a new game with this new team of lightning powered zappy kill and grappling hook powered grapple pie and rock throwing rock star. And we tackled the desert island and have successfully done three missions without losing a single civilian, boosting our, our grid to full power and grid defense to 22%. Unfortunately, we missed one of the bonus objectives in Gamma Trench. We didn't destroy any mountains. I'm sorry, I had too much respect for nature. Uh, but it is time for another mission. I believe with one more mission here, the corporate HQ is going to get attacked. So I'm tempted to be very greedy and go for Scorched Earth. We need to activate one of our terraformers to destroy a Vec hive beneath the surface. Now this is an in this is a very interesting, very intriguing anyway objective. I don't know how it works. Terraform the grassland back to desert. So. Apparently, uh, this corporation doesn't like grass, green growing things, or maybe they think the Vec prefer it. I don't know. But, um, well, she says destroy a Vec hive beneath the surface, but, you know, can you ever trust what the CEO of a corporation tells you? Especially not with one with massive terraforming uh, equipment on, on a... Is this an Earth? I guess this might be Earth, or is this an alien planet? I don't know. Um, and there's two places we must defend the terraformer and the coal plant for bonus objectives. Now there's lots of water around the outside edge, which is going to be almost entirely useless to us because if we take this mission, the grappling hook only pulls enemies, it cannot push them. Uh, and the rock throwing only pushes the enemies to either side of the rock. So enemies sitting right here where this alpha is or right here, a rock next to them would push them into the water. Obviously the, the alpha hornet wouldn't drown because it's flying, but very limited ability to make use of the water to kill enemies, but that's fine. We don't have a, there's no objective to kill a certain number of enemies, merely to defend places and do this terraforming. I don't know how that works. The other uh, missions we have available to us is Doomsday Point, defend the Earth Mover and end the battle with less than four mech damage. That sounds reasonably easy to do. Plus there's a lovely huge chasm, starting off anyway, to pull enemies into. The Earth Mover is apparently going to fill it up. And uh, Proving Grounds, defend the bombs. I don't think I'm going to do that. I've done that mission before. Oh, that type, type of mission before, and these two sound a lot more intriguing. My greed tells me go for this one. My practical senses, you know, my practical mind says this one will be easier to deal with. We would have the pulley mech sitting up here, probably, and the rock throwing mech will probably also sit up here. And the lightning mech waiting around in amongst the enemies and hoping they bunch up to, to damage them. Oh, they'll probably get webbed. I don't know. I last mission last game I was I was very greedy and happy go lucky and we didn't save humanity. I'm kinda thinking this is the first island. I should be practical, I should be responsible, I should say, regardless of what happens, you know, I think we, in this mission, I think we can save all civilians. So, of course, I'm not going to be responsible or practical, I'm going to be greedy, I'm going to be curious, I want to find out what this terraform objective is. We may not be able to win this mission easily. Such as life. Let's give it a go. 
So, we have a terraformer. Oh, the terraformer has Chloe has crew in it. It's another unit on our team. And eradicate all life in front of the terraformer. Terraformer, that's wow. That's cool. That means five turns. We must do four attacks on all sides with this to get all that greenery. Uh, one on this side for that, one here, one there, and one there. But that's situational and can really do a lot of damage. And hopefully things like the Alpha Firefly will be in the way. Because that's an instant kill. It doesn't matter what how, how many hit points they have. It's just death. Also, we need to be out of the way. But, you know, that should be doable. This sounds like fun. This sounds like a lot of fun. Let's begin with... Where do I want to put my people? Let's put... Wherever I put Zappy Kill is probably going to get webbed. That's what I'm afraid of. What's the Alpha Hornet? It stabs two tiles in front of it for two damage. I don't want to. I don't really want to encourage it to come up and sit in front of us here and attack the buildings. But otherwise, it's probably going to sit on one of these two anyway, which is a nuisance. What I kind of want to do is lure the Scorpion if I can up this way. Ideally, the Hornet will come sit here or something. Maybe if I sit there. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know where a good place to start is. I'm worried what the Scorpion's going to do. It's probably just going to web the Terraformer, to be honest. It's right there in front of it. So I'm going to sit here. Grapple. I don't know where the Grapple's going to be most useful, but... I'm just down on one edge, so we've got a column to move so we can pull things out of the way, maybe. Maybe I'll start here. And Rockstar will start behind them with a little bit of room to move. Let's try that. Oh, there's a Time Pod! A temporal rescue craft designated Time Pod has been detected. Alright, so... The terraforming unit is under your control. You need to turn grass tiles into sand tiles and destroy enemies at the same time. So, we have two attacks we must deal with. Uh, this Hornet is no problem and the Scorpion is actually no problem. Neither of them are going to damage Isabel at all because two separate attacks will both be swallowed up by the armor. So only damage, attacks of damage 2 or higher that we need to worry about. The Alpha Hornet, that means we're free to actually go up there and kill it. I could move here and lightning it. And move here and drop a, well not there, move here and drop a rock on it. That would destroy it entirely, which would be a really good thing to have happen at this point. Plus we would get the Tide Bod. Uh, that would mean Zappy Kill would get pushed onto this spot here and take one damage when that enemy tries to merge next turn. That's fine. The Terraformer can use its ability to save itself this turn. There's no problem with that at all. We don't need to use it there because the Scorpion will not actually cause any damage that we care about. I think killing that Alpha Hornet is a really good start, so I'm going to do it. We got a time pod. We'll find out at the end of the mission if we survive what's in it. Bang! Or rather, zap! And look out below! 4 XP for Ganymede, who has been very slow getting XP, so I like that as well. And Chloe, please 
destroy all life in a small area. Right. So we'll have one new Vec next turn. We'll have a Scorpion and a Hornet still to deal with. Grapple Pie can't grapple anything. Not that it matters. Um, Isabel will be quite fine. And um, so far, we have not electrocuted her this this mission. Let's see what happens. Splash. Splash. Wait, did, did that do damage? That's a, I saw a number one pop up there. Hmm. No, it didn't do damage. I don't know why it said one. That's only an ordinary horn. It only does one damage. Isabel's fine. Okay. All right. I think today the terraformer should destroy the scorpion, which means we're gonna move out of the way. So far, so good. If Grapple Pie moves back a step, we can pull the Hornet into the same area and kill it at the same time. That's, you know, a good move. And finally, Zappy Kill could come. Well, we could tank another damage. Well, there's nowhere else to sit to, to zap this. But we probably want to zap them before they do any harm next turn. So yeah, let's tank, let's tank. Why not? Gotta be careful, we can't do it again. But, um... I don't think there's any other way of defeating that Scion, and I don't want it to be around next turn, because I don't know what enemies we're going to get next turn. Oh, I still need a plan to deal with this Hornet. Need a plan to deal with this hornet. Which means dropping a rock on it, I guess. Oh, we can drop a we can drop a rock on the scion. That's fine, we'll drop a rock on the scion. We'll zap the hornet after killing the scion, which will kill the hornet as well. We don't need to pull it. Uh Oh, we could just drop a rock on one of these. Have <laughs> no enemies arrive next turn. That would be that would be entertaining. Um, that actually sounds like a great way to uh, to be ready for whatever happens next turn. Is is the only enemies turning out? That's no XP, but more importantly, that's no threats. And threats. Well, I think threats still trump XP. Isabel's about to level up. Ganymede's getting closer. When. If we kill them due to environment effects, I think they all share the XP. So... Whatever happens, I think I want Ganymede to get a kill and destroy that sign. That's, that's just sensible. Isabel. Yes, there's no reason not to pull this on it. Actually, that leaves Zappy Kill free to repair. Lauren can repair her own mech and move somewhere more convenient. Right, Chloe, drop some sand on those lovely, lovely giant insects. All right, one more XP and Isabel will level up. Five more for Ganymede. This is going, this is going much better than I expected. Oh, we're still blocking an enemy coming up there. Interesting. We can do that in a more central position and still repair. Why not? Let's repair ourselves. A new firefly! Two fireflies, that's great. I was afraid of scorpions. Well, three more enemies threatening to come up next turn. 
So this one of these two fireflies will be destroyed by the terraforming because we'll attack one side or the other. That's brilliant. The other one is three damage, which between lightning and rocks we can absolutely defeat. There's no chance of pulling them both into the same area, unfortunately. Um, so Grapple Pie will not really have much to work with, much need of anything this turn. If I want Ganymede to get the XP, I should Lightning this bug first. Well, I took a damage blocking that enemy. I don't want. I don't really want to do that again next turn if I can avoid it. I'd rather have the three enemies to face. Oh sh! Bollocks! That's not good. Did you see how not good that was? I think I'm gonna use my reset. Note to self. When attacking, pay attention to what the icons tell you are going to happen just before clicking. Because it told me that that would uh, destroy the terraform of that. I should have paid attention. So. Change of plan. Well, we already said Isabel has nothing that she needs to do. So Isabel can pull that out of range of the terraformer. Great. Now we can lightning it. Ah. <laughs> Poor Isabel. Why, why do I always electrocute Isabel? Anyway, it's not going to attack. Not that it matters. We're going to drop a rock in it. It'll be dead. And we're going to terraform this side. And Ganymede. Sorry, uh, Isabel has leveled up and given us plus three more grid defense. We're now at 25% grid defense. Let's see what, what we get. Bonnet, Scorpion, Scorpion. Did I mention I don't like scorpions? Oh, two more notes. Of course, we had one left over. Right. So, first things first. This scorpion is a nuisance, but we can terraform it out of existence, which we need to do anyway for this objective. So, unless we can pull anything else into that zone, I don't see that we can. Then that's the right move to make. However... That leaves us with a hornet that's going to destroy the terraformer, a scorpion that's going to attack a building, and a hornet that's going to attack a coal plant. This is all our bonus objectives being a nuisance. Isabel cannot get will not be able to get to a useful spot deal with this hornet to pull it anywhere. So it would be limited to pulling the scorpion out of the way. Okay. Instead of that... Hmm. Zappy Kill could walk up here once, once we've destroyed the scorpion. Zap these two. Hornet would be dead. Scorpion would be almost dead. So, well, at least Scorpion on one on one hit point. This one on two hit points. Well, I don't care about the Scorpion so much. I can actually move up. Hmm. I can move up here. Pull the scorpion into the smoke and negate the attack entirely. Not that it matters because we wouldn't be sitting there. Terraforming must happen. We must. We need to do that. So I'm just going to do it. 
that leaves me a little more clear on what I can do. So, so zapping the uh, terraformer hurts it, but zapping ordinary buildings doesn't. However, if I move, if I pull the scorpion out of the way before Zappy Kill comes and lightnings them, then I won't actually be able to kill the hornet because we don't quite have enough movement to get up next to it. That's either of those is four movements, so I think this move has to happen first. Move here, lightning those two, dead hornet, injured scorpion. Um, move up here, drop a rock on the Hornet, dead Hornet, mech, push into Scorpion, dead Scorpion, actually, one damage to mech, that's, that sounds like fun. Uh, I would rather kill them all, it's the last turn, so one more damage is not, is not gonna hurt whatsoever there. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Electrify! It's stacked to cancel as well, but that doesn't matter. Let's let's do some murder of insect and knock a bit of paint off a mech. I mean, one more damage is fine. Zappy kill will be down to one, but on the final turn it doesn't matter. We'll have defended the coal plant and the terraformer, and we'll have killed all the mech. Two mech have been deleted. Wow, Ganymede got 5 XP there and leveled up for another 3 grid defense. 28% grid defense. And uh, Grapple Pie, well, has, is hiding. Has nothing to do. We might as well just end the turn because, really. Uh, let's let's do a symbolic repair of, of the mech that we damaged. Oh, we can't. It's only self-repair. Repair our electro electrocution damage. And we're done. No more Vec. Perfect victory. I am liking this squad a lot more than the uh, than the previous ones. We're doing a lot better with them so far. Although we're, I think, a little more tactically constrained. But I, it's really just the extra two damage of our two attacks uh, is, is making all the difference. Terraformer is secure, and sensors report no activity from Vec below the surface. The region is ours. Region secured. We defended the Terraformer for one rep. We terraformed all the grassland for another rep. We protected the coal plant. So we got one power, and our grid defense is now 30%. This is getting better. That's that's a 30% chance for any building that we can't uh, prevent an attack on from actually resisting the damage to it. And we protected a time pod, so we have a time pod to open up in a minute. We saved all the civilians, we got two promotions. Well, you know, I definitely don't want to count my chickens before they hatch, because uh, I did that last game and it did not go well, but things are looking a lot better right now than I think they were this time last game. Let's see what's in the pod. It's one reactor core. Promotion. Promotion. Seismic activity and corporate HQ is under attack. So let's have a quick look at what the corporate HQ is. There's a Vec threat. We have uh, Alpha Hornet. I think that's the big one that does three. Oh, the Hornet Leader. That does three damage to three tiles. Destroy the Hornet Leader and protect the corporate tower are the only objectives there. Obviously, defend all the buildings as well. With one reactor core, I want to see what upgrades we can get to these mechs, because I've not looked at upgrades at all, because we've not had any... This is our first reactor core of the game. So, we can get health bonuses and move bonuses. Building chain. Chain through grid buildings without causing damage. That's... That's interesting. That would go really well with plus one damage, because... Being able to do, kill scorpions with one hit, ordinary scorpions, and... Plus changing through buildings means that would be super effective. But three three reactor cores needed to get that that extra plus one damage, so that's not gonna happen for a long time. Grapple Pie! Shield Ally. 
So grappling hook is used on an ally, it gives them a shield. I... Eh... That's not exciting me. I prefer to use grappling hook on enemies or to actually use Isabel to tank. I'd rather spend that on extra health so Isabel can tank and <coughs> get electrocuted <coughs> a little more often. Um, or plus one move for extra tactical options. Shielding our own mechs is not a priority at this point in the game. The enemies we're facing generally don't do enough damage to worry about that. And what can Rockstar get in upgrades? Health and movement, or two reactor cores to get plus one damage. Well, we don't have two reactor cores. Extra health would be okay, but we're far enough back, I don't think it's needed. Extra movement is always good, of course. Oh, I did want to test what happens if I throw a rock into water. Let's see if there's water in this map. No, there is none. Done testing. Is the test map always the same? Nope. Let's test what happens. Just a big splash, as I thought. It doesn't sit in the water for a turn. But it was worth a check. Uh, so my choices are... Make Zappy kill more effective some of the time. Is that going to help on here? We do have buildings bunched up. If anyone's around this cluster of buildings, that's lots of damage. It looks like quite a lot of options for pushing and pulling enemies into water as well. Obviously, the Hornet's excluded because they fly. Hmm. But, chaining damage... Sounds... Like a lot of fun. So, question. Let's test how that works. Because I want to see... Uh, well, they're not, they're not where I need them. And they don't move. Can I get any enemies next to a building? That's what I want to see. Yes. So if I'm here and I attack the building, does it chain through to the enemy? No, it does not. Lightning the building does nothing. Uh, but. Well, let's see if we can get a test with enemies on two sides of a building. No. Fortunately, in the test maps, the enemies never move, so unless I get a situation quickly to test out this chaining, it's not really going to be a useful test. One more try. No. Although, imagine that, you know? Boom! Uh, boom! Done testing. Right. Building chain. I feel like that's even more situational. We have to attack an enemy. Other enemies near the buildings will get hurt too. That could come in really handy here. But on the other hand, they could all attack different groups of buildings and it would be wasted. I think it's just as likely... Well, the enemies are likely to bunch up anyway. Because they can't. most of them won't be able to go in the water. And they'll, they'll sit around these channels. So to that end, building chain could actually let us do attacks on both sides of the buildings from sitting anywhere around there. I can't get extra damage. I can only get extra movement. I'm thinking extra health or movement for Grapple Pie. Extra movement would give us more ability to make use of this water to pull enemies in, which is a more effective kill than merely chaining uh, lightning attacks, I think. I could be wrong. Alternatively, more health lets us tank more attacks, including lightning attacks. And actually, since we tend to take a lot of lightning damage because we grapple enemies into places to, to be lightninged, I think that's going to be more useful. I'd like both, but being able to take more lightning attacks and possibly tank more enemy attacks uh, is what I'm going to do. So let's... We're going, unfortunately, we have two reactor cores. Or we've made different choices. But let's do it. Effect Monstrosity is assaulting our tower. We have to rely on you this final time to help us. 
So we have a Hornet Leader, which has six hit points, does two damage to three tiles in a row, uh, it can fly over water, um, and we have to kill it, ideally. And a Firefly and an Ordinary Hornet, who are quite boring and ordinary. So, Zappy Kill wants to be in a position to zap. Um, I think the Hornet Leader is probably going to go for these buildings or the tower. So I'm going to start in a place where I can walk out and do some zapping. Uh, grapple Pie is going to want to grapple things into water, so I'm going to want to start at a place where that might be useful. And Rockstar probably just hang out the back to, you know, generally wreak havoc. Attacking buildings. And attacking corporate HQ. Alright, so here is an actual example where if I had got the building chain, I could attack that, and the Alpha Hornet would also take damage. But I didn't, so that's not a thing that's going to happen. Now, we cannot grapple um, the Alpha Hornet, sorry, the Hornet Leader into water, but we could certainly move here or there and grapple it out of the way so its attack is, is defeated. We could also grapple up there so it gets to attack two, three buildings and get one damage from the, this Firefly. That's really not a good plan. We can drop a rock on that Firefly, but it won't kill it. So we're looking at pushing that Firefly out of the way as well. And killing this Hornet. Can we do better? Can we kill two? Can we bunch these up? The Hornet Leader's attack just goes so far that, uh, well, the Hornet Leader attacked first. If we push the Hornet Leader this way with the rock, then it kills that Hornet for us and we've got a free lightning attack, which we can move up here and lightning this bug and tank its damage. Or here, in fact, and lightning it, and leave Lauren to safely tank its damage without taking damage herself. Or we could zap the Alpha Leader, the Hornet Leader, which won't kill it, but we'll start defeating it. And we've only got four turns, so I think it's a good idea. And then Isabel just sits here and uh, blocks that attack. I'm not worried about a single Fireflies so much. Although, very likely, one of these will be a Scorpion and... Um, her down next turn, but you know, we'll see what we have to do. So, for this to work, Lauren has to move first, then Ganymede fires his rock here. Oh, wait, the rock will block an attack as well. We don't need to tank it, we can actually block an enemy and tank that. Let's, let's, let's do that. The rock will block the Fireflies attack and push the Hornet leader out of the way where it will kill the other Hornet for us because it does two damage. Oh, the rock, no, the rock doesn't block it because it's water. Silly me. So, plan A. Move here and just block the attack. Oh, yeah, we don't, don't pick up the lightning attack. Right, end turn. Flash. We have one scorpion and a scion, which is boosting all their health. Oh, the scorpion's not pinning us down. That's nice. That's very nice of it. So, the scion needs to die, or we won't be able to kill anything this turn. We can ignore this firefly entirely. Um. Alpha Hornet, I'm sorry, Hornet Leader is attacking first again, so pulling the Hornet Leader here will hurt. Oh, that's an. Oh no, there's an ordinary scorpion boosted by the Sion. I always keep thinking it's an Alpha when I see bonus health, but I forget the plus one. Pull the Hornet Leader here. Move here. Pull the Hornet Leader there. Do lightning on them, doing two damage to that, two damage to that. 
He'll be on one hit point, he'll get killed by the Hornet's attack. I can move there, yeah, I can move there to do a lightning attack, no problem. I can move there. And drop a rock first. Well, first and foremost, drop a rock on this Scion to kill it and remove this health bonus. I think that's a plan. Boom. Yoink. Oh, hello, Isabel. Aren't you glad I gave you that extra health? Because... Would you like some uh, electrification? Alright, this Firefly's attack will do nothing. The Hornet will kill the Scorpion so it won't get a chance to attack. And the other two tiles will attack are harmless. Uh, Zappy kill unfortunately will take one damage, but will block an enemy from emerging, so that's probably working out for us. We'll have three enemies left to deal with next turn and we can kill the Hornet leader. Splish. Another Firefly, nice. One of the... So both Fireflies are doing nothing interesting. Cool. Um, we could actually move up and pull one into the water without trouble. So one of them is an easy kill. We can lightning the Hornet leader for another kill. And drop a rock on the third one to hurt it. Won't kill it, but uh, it's definitely better than nothing. We alternatively, move up here and drop a rock on the Hornet leader, but I'd rather stay in this zone, which means moving there. So, first things first, let's move Zappy Kill here to attack, ready to attack the Hornet leader. Let's move Isabel before we do our electrification attack so that we don't needlessly electrocute her. Let's destroy this leader and get that bonus objective secured. And because it was dead, it fell in the water. Yoink! Splash! And the Firefly's attack is harmless, so we're just going to injure it a little. Great! Four enemies next turn. What do we got? Scorpion, Hornet, Firefly. That's not unexpected. Last turn. So we can kill a Firefly if we want, no problem. Uh, what's the attack order? Scorpion's first. So we pump. We could pump the Scorpion into the way this Firefly block the Firefly's attack. I wouldn't kill it. Wouldn't kill either of them, but uh, would be of some benefit. We could actually then. Electrocute them both, but then that will kill all the scorpion. No, it wouldn't. We'd kill it on their turn with the fireflies attack. That'd be fine. Uh, but that leaves this hornet is a problem. We do need to destroy. We do need to do something about this hornet. Uh, what can we do about that hornet? We can't get close enough to the lightning earth. We can't get around here, even if the mech wasn't in the way, with only three movement, to drop a rock on it. And we can't drop a rock on it from here, because this is adjacent. So we're going to have to use the rock to push this one out of the way, and the only place we can do that from is here. So, going to mean it's going to have to move there, drop a rock there. That's uh, that's really the only choice we're going to need. So, the rock is going to be in our way. I think Zappy Kill is going to have to tank the damage from the Firefly and just injure the other two for no real purpose, but you know. And since Isabel can't move, we're going to do that. Oh, we can't kill the Hornet. Oh, what am I talking about? It's got two hit points. We can move up here and totally kill it. 
Of course we kill it. Uh, I'm an idiot sometimes. Alright. Well, we can't kill everything, but uh, we can do another electrification. Sorry, Isabel, this is why I gave you those two extra hit points, though. So, no damage to Isabel from the Scorpion, one damage to Zappy Kill from the Firefly. And they will retreat. Mission complete! I must admit that was an impressive performance. We will rest easier knowing that Vec Monstrosity no longer infests our island. Destroy the Hornet Leader, protect the Corporate Tower, that's two more reputation. We have six reputation, and we've just finished the island, so we'll get a chance to spend that. We saved all the civilians, we got some more bonus XP. Um, and we got an achievement. Finish the Corporate Island without taking any building damage. So, spend reputation. Well, we don't have any reactor cores to spend, so we might as well spend our reputation right away. What do we have available? We get, well, we could sell anything. We can always buy a power grid, but, you know, we don't need to do that right now. We don't need to restore the power grid. We kept it at maximum. We upped our grid defensive, and we could spend it on two reactor cores, but that's quite pricey. What have we got? A sale on a passive ability. Ulvik take plus one damage from bumps and blocking emerging back. Well, there's a... Oh, and it re but it requires power. Um, if that didn't require power, that would be a, yeah, a no-brainer. I'm not sure we have any extra cores to spend on the power, so it doesn't make sense to buy it if we can't power it. But it sounds like a nice thing. Doing double damage on those kind of behaviors would be great. Two rep for a self-destruct. Needs no power, any class can take it. The mech explodes, killing itself and anything adjacent to it. One use per battle. Uh. Yeah, like that. I can see how that might save. Save the day in a really bad situation because it doesn't matter what hit points the enemies are on, that will just kill them. Uh, and presumably any building is next to as well, so it's gonna be. That's really last, really, really, really last ditch. Kill buildings, kill the mech pilot. In fact, you know, sort of, that's the last turn of the game is really the only time you use that, otherwise that mech is out of the battle for the rest of the mission. Uh, if a mech does get destroyed, it's pilot gets killed, but the mech, powered by an AI, not a personality AI like, like Ganymede, but uh, just uh, no special abilities, is, does exist the next mission. That's what we had last game when Kyle Reese died. His mech was still available on the next mission. Those who rep on a target to strike any class weapon, call in an airstrike on a single tile anywhere on the map. Does one damage, one use for battle, but it takes no power. Kinda pricey, but doing one damage and pushing everything around anywhere on the map, you know, again, could save the day, perhaps. Or a shield tank, any class weapon, needs two power. So again, we don't have the power for it. Deploy a shield tank that can give shields to allies. Well, that gives us another unit that can protect ourselves with shields. Would be nice, but it's not really the thing we need right now. I'm half thinking target strike. If it was on sale for one, I'd instant buy it, but two, two rep out of six. Doesn't seem a little bit pricey for doing only one damage. If it did two damage, if it did three damage, it would be nice to buy. If it did two damage, it would be probably worthwhile. But right now, it seems like. Because it's a weapon, it would take place of my normal attack. So, you know, it'd probably be a thing for uh, Isabel in the grapple. in the grapple tank to use. Because right now, Isabel has no damage dealing abilities at all. So that would at least, if there's not a useful grapple to do, should give a chance to do one damage or some useful pushes or both. Not bad. 
Alternatively, reactor goals. We could buy two reactor goals right now. If we could, if we didn't have the option to buy two, I would probably just buy one and that weapon. I want to see what I want to see what I can spend two reactor cores on. Uh, building chain, maybe. Uh, shield ally, probably not. Move, maybe. Plus one damage on the rock is exciting because three damage is a kill with the rock on ordinary scorpions and the like, rather than just a wound. Makes it much easier to finish off enemies. Or plus one move, plus or plus health, get more tactical options. Plus one move on both of these, in fact, would help us a lot. If we pick up any more reactor cores from time pods or, or mission rewards on the next island, then we'll have then we'll be able to spend them there. I'm still I'm still trying to debate whether Target Strike is worth buying. You know what? It's another tactical option. I'm gonna do it. It's only two rep. You know, we'll probably get another some more rep next turn. And I'll buy one reactor core now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give Grapple Pie the Tago Strike. Let's do a quick quick test run. You know, well, not a very good test because I destroyed everyone one bit, you know. It's simple. But it is damage dealing ability for Grapple Pie, which is, uh, and it's a push ability. We don't have a push ability with Grapple Pie. Both of those could be quite tactically useful. Rockstar tends not to be very move constrained most of the time. Tends not to be under fire most of the time. I'm going to regret both those statements, I think. Uh, Grapple Pie tends to be movement constrained. Zappy Kill tends to be movement constrained. And we're actually taking doing a lot of tanking with Zappy Kill that we don't expect. Well, Zappy Kill already has two cores. Grapple Pie has one. Rockstar has one. Not that it matters, it's where they're gonna make most use. On the other hand, because Rockstar's push ability when we want to use that does need specific angles Rockstar having four move would certainly help but I think overall Grapple Pie is going to get the most flexibility out of being able to move against Shield Ally no extra move right spend our rep well we've done that uh, we have no rep we have one rep left to spend. Oh, wait. Rep gets lost. I forgot. Rep gets lost if we don't spend it before leaving the island. So either we buy this force amp, which we can't use. All vec take plus one damage from bumps and blocking emerging vec. Or we can actually install that on Rockstar, for example. What am I going to spend it on? Plus two defense for 32. There's no harm in that at all. Or do I get this extra damage from situations where things get pushed? Uh, I think since I since I have to spend it, I forgot. I forgot I have to spend it. If I say leave island, it says it will be lost. So so far we're doing all right on power grid. And our defense has already been boosted up several times. So I'm going to buy that. I forgot that we can't keep it for the next island. So I'm going to buy that. I'm going to install it in Rockstar for the moment. Going to give Rockstar an extra power core. And we can power it up. We can choose on any mission. Before a mission how we want to power this up. So 
you know, let's do that. Alright, I think I've got time for one more mission. Last game, we died on the icy island. So... Also, it's got scorpions. I don't like scorpions. I'm gonna go back to archiving. It doesn't have scorpions. We need to beat three these three islands to unlock the fourth, and we wanna we wanna unlock the fourth. Unless we just have to beat the ice island. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see if beating the ice island alone, because we last game we unlocked we completed two of them. I don't know if this means complete three islands this game or three islands in total. Let's go back to the ice island. Pinnacle Robotics fights a war on two fronts. One against the Vec, the other against its own sentient weapons. I hope you can respect both forms of life on this island, organic and mechanical. Alrighty. So right off the bat, in a dead end in terms of opening new missions, we have a mission that is exceedingly tempting. It has a high threat, has two robot factories to defend, and the robotics lab to defend. The robotics lab will give us a reactor core, giving us an extra mech upgrade. That is really, really tempting to get on the first mission. The robot factories will get us rep. Uh, if we don't, if we do defend the robot factories, they, at least one of them, I think, maybe both of them, will spit out you robot enemies every turn, which is not so fun. But the robot enemies are weak. They do lots of damage, but they're quite easy to kill. There's an Alpha Beetle Scarab, I think they're called? No, something. Scarabs, yeah. Here, which is basically an artillery-like attack. So it's lots of shunting to uh, keep it out of the way. Or maybe lightning this time. Alternatively, we've got Glacier Kit Cliff, which opens up new area. Uh, it has defensive shields on most of the buildings, which will, uh, if those buildings get attacked, the shield will absorb the damage on that turn. Uh, bonus objectives, block Vex spawning three times. Interesting. If we can do that with other Vec, then they take bonus damage thanks to the passive ability. That would be a really good mission to, to use that passive ability on. Ice Storm. What does an Ice Storm do? Large areas of the map will periodically freeze solid. Nice for us if the Vec are in there. Not nice for us if we're in there. Okay. Or Robotics Repair, which is another dead end. So, unless it's really good, freeze and defend both robots. These machines are not currently themselves. Look past their malfunctioning aggression and see them as living beings. How... How would we freeze them? Unless one of them has a freeze attack that we can use on the others and it decides to target them. There's, don't see there's any way to freeze them. Not, not with any of the weapons I've got. So that's really... It's a dead end. I don't know how we do the bonus objective, so I think we'll just leave that one. Cryogenic Labs looks like a great place to start. While we're all in good health, while we've all got good weapons. Uh, do I want the passive plus damage from bumps? I think I do. Because if we push enemies into other enemies, that's extra damage. That's actually, you know, two damage out of one. That's as good as dropping a rock on them, which has always been the problem of dropping rocks next to them. These factories are manufacturing hostile machines, but there are hundreds of innocent lives within. Please defend them while we try to shut them down safely. Let's go. Two scorpions, a hornet, and an alpha scarab with four hit points. And a spitting glands, that's a three damage artillery shot. Zappy Kill needs to be in a position to do some Zappy Killing. Uh, so I think Zappy Kill is going to hang around here. Grapple Pie needs to be in a position to do some grappling. Probably up and down this aisle, I guess. I guess. And Rockstar can sit back and lob rocks, as usual. 
Let's do it. And we got a time pod coming in. Region first, pod recovery second. Well, you say that. Oh, would you look at that? Would you look at that? So, we have three enemies bunched up. Two of them really need to die. This turn. One of them uh, is the alpha one, which we're worried about, which we kind of want to kill, but is attacking an empty spot if we move. So, we don't have to worry about him as much this turn. So on that front, we need to need to kill the scorpion or get it out of the way somehow. Now, lightning alone won't be enough. So we could we could yank it out of the way. Uh, or something. Or, in fact, potentially use this single-use weapon on it, but that seems potentially a waste. Uh, we do need to move this scorpion out of the way as well. We can't pull it out of the way. Uh, because we can't get here to pull it. And we can't get to the other side of it to pull it. And there's buildings in the way from, from this side. Alternatively, if we pushed... If we drop a rock... If we can push it here somehow... Then when we do the lightning zap, it takes two damage. It will die next turn from the two damage it takes from this enemy spawning and block an enemy. Both good. And then we're left with... We can zap them all at once. Zapping all four at once sounds like a really good plan. Now, we just did get a laser bot spawning from the robot factory, but it does not get a chance to attack this turn. We only have to attack it next turn. So if we could block one, if we could block one of the vet spawning... Kill... Three of them? Two of them? Three of them? Then we're going to have two or three... We're going to have three or four enemies next turn, including the laser bots to deal with, and I think that's manageable. Can we kill this fellow as well? We could, we could use our airstrike on the forest here to push... The scorpion over there. Won't damage it immediately, but it'll take two from the lightning and then two from the enemy emerging. Um, if we're, you know, using the artillery, using the airstrike to support a triple kill this turn, I think is a good plan. Then we can, before we do that, we can lob a rock on this one to damage it by two. Then it'll die for the lightning. If we do it first, then we don't push the scorpion back out of the way, and we obviously don't push that. We won't get the time pod this turn, but we will be in a position to lightning four enemies at once. You know, that's which sounds like a really, really good idea. And then I can get off the ice, because sitting on the ice hmm, has not been a good plan in the past. I can sit on the ice and have some more freedom to move up and down these two ax axes, which might actually be better. Let's, uh, before we do that, let's lob a rock. Uh, well, we might as well stay back where we are. Lob a rock onto the scorpion and hurt it a little. Let's use the airstrike that we spent money and a reactor core on. Uh, no, it didn't cost an extra Just money. And... Lauren? Show us what your lightning can do. Bang. Two dead right now. One more will die next turn. Alpha is hurt. We will have one spawning. Analyze what we will have three enemies to deal with next turn and a time pod to collect as long as the enemies don't don't stomp on it first but hopefully we'll get the time pod 
Smish. Miss. Oh, I don't know what that is. I've never seen it before, and it's an alpha. And we have another robot to be a nuisance, but not to be a much of a threat. Three new enemies emerging. All right, what have we got? What is this thing? An alpha centipede. Centipedes have two movements, and so they move slowly. They launch a volatile massive goo, applying acid on nearby units. So it does two damage, plus, I assume, afterburn every turn afterwards. I've not encountered acid before. That's not fun. More importantly, because its attack hits three tiles side by side, it's not enough to simply push it to one side by one tile like we have been able to do for most other enemies because it will still hit its original target. That's not very nice at all. And it's got five hit points. The Alpha Scarab is targeting us, so we can ignore its attack. That's good. The Laserbot. Laserbots do damage through everything. So right now, that Laserbot is set up to destroy a building, whether we're in the way or not. So we need to do something about it. Uh, and ideally we collect the Time Pod, but if we can't, we can't. Now... The Alpha Centipede, we can't move it. The last thing that happens is enemies coming out. So it's no good to do like three damage to it and push it here, hoping it'll die, because it will still destroy two buildings before it dies. If we could pull it this way, then its attack would be neutralized, but we can't do that. If we could pull it, well, we can't get there because there's a robot in the way. But if we could get there and pull it to here, then also then this attack also would be neutralized. But right now, that's a bit of a problem. And Ganymede's movement is constrained because we're surrounded by two different robots. One of which must die. How do I do this? Ganymede can't drop a rock. So we've used up our airstrike, so we can't even use it again. Again, we can't drop a rock on this Alpha Centipede even if we wanted to because we can't move there. What we could do is pull this laser bot to here and use it to destroy the other laser bot. That gives Ganymede freedom to move. Sorry, gives yeah, Ganymede in Rockstar freedom to move around. Then the problem becomes, how do we deal with the Alpha Centipede? We can do four damage to it with the Lightning and the Rock. Or with the Lightning and the Rock pushing it to hit... Well, no, we can't push it sideways because we would need to attack from this angle to push up and down. That's not good. Alternatively... Another alternative would be... Drop a rock onto this laser bot, destroying it. Then... Isabel moves up here and pulls Alpha Centipede to this spot on the ice, leaving its attack neutralized. And that would leave the laser bot and the Alpha Centipede next to each other, ready for a lightning strike. Which would also hit Isabel, unfortunately, but that's why we gave Isabel extra hit points. Which would destroy the laser bot, saving the building, and hurt the Alpha Centipede by two. And it would also hit both these ice, weakening the ice, which means if a unit got attacked on that ice next turn, it would fall in the water and drown. And that sounds useful. That means we're ignoring the Alpha Scarab, and we're going to have five enemies to deal with next turn. Alpha Centipede and whatever's coming out here, which is... Not brilliant. But on the plus side, we've dealt with the two bots. Oh, we're going to have six, because we're going to get another robot, aren't we? Well, we've dealt with two, these two bots. We've neutralized the Alpha Centipede's attack and injured it. And I think that's the best we can hope for right now. I actually don't want to move very far away, so I'm only going to sit here. We'll be out of range of the lightning. 
but that gives us space to move back again next turn if we need to. One. Two. Actually, undo that move. What if I move here? Is that going to encourage the Alpha Centipede to attack me and the Robot Factory? I hope so. If so, it will be sitting on the ice. Which means it will be an easy kill next turn. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that. And three. My apologies, Isabel, but it's for a good cause. So now we've got weak ice. We've got an injured Alpha Scarab who's not... Got... Oh, their attack is a projectile. Okay, I didn't know that. Does it... It does kind of show that. Right, so its attack is a projectile, so actually shunting it to one side here would have neutralized its attack by sending it off to the far end of the map. And I'm kind of lucky that there was nothing in the way up here that uh, I was not thinking about that would not get hit by it. So, pointless attack, pointless attack, bunch of new enemies, hopefully we can grab that time pod before the end of the mission. Let's see what we get. Splish. Zap. Oh, acid. I have to see what acid is about. We got another scarab. Oh dear. Two hornets. And another robot. Oh, there's a lot, a lot of stuff going on. What does acid do? Inflicts acid on the first unit that steps on this space. So, actually maybe having acid lying around is a good thing sometimes, if enemies walk over it and we don't. I assume acid does one damage per turn, just like fire. What do we have? We have these two buildings under attack by the Alpha Scarab. We can kill it this turn if we need to, because uh, it's got two hit points. We have this building under attack by the Hornet. We have this Hornet, which we don't care about, because we can move out of the way. We have another Scarab attacking the other Robot Factory. Again, it's two hit points. We could kill it. Ideally, we could shove these two into each other, but we don't have enough pushing uh, attacks to make that work. So, biggest problem actually is our Alpha Centipede, which is attacking the Robot Factory and other things. Now, as we just learnt, there's no point moving up here and pulling the Alpha Centipede out of the way because it's a projectile attack. We do need to move it in a different direction. We could pull it here and it would attack the same three spots harmlessly, which is fine. We can neutralize it. Alternatively, we can drop a rock here and push it there, but that's better to pull when we can because we can use the rock more usefully elsewhere. Uh, that leaves us with two scarabs that we must kill, one of which we can drop a rock on, which is going to be that that one I think and lightning this one now here's where the lightning through buildings oh wait we can't even get around here Let's get, we're gonna have to lightning this one and drop a rock on that one one two three if we pull that out of the way we can still do that here's where lightning through buildings would be really good because we could lightning through buildings one lightning attack would absolutely kill will kill all four all four of those enemies at once. That would be amazing. That would be mass destruction for the other name. Unfortunately, we did not decide to spend the power core on that ability, and maybe I'm regretting that now. Perhaps I am regretting. I, I think it's fair to say I'm regretting that I didn't do that. Let's maybe we can get a reactor core out of here and do that next time, and then never get this opportunity again. Uh, we wouldn't even have to move to that. We could lightning this one, and it would still kill them all, you know. Um, Oh, we do need to deal with that Hornet. Well, we have three... We have four attacks to neutralize. Oh, dear. Oh, well, that mean Alpha is going to do three damage. Uh, so that's more important than this one. This one's attacking the Robot Factory. Again, more important than an ordinary building. We want to save everything, but if anything can't be saved, we're going to pick an ordinary building. Can I use my rock attack to kill one of these and move one of the others in any useful fashion? 
If the rock pushes in all directions, we can try and watch it there. Well, we... No, we don't have the ability to hit the tile anyway. Um, I don't know what happens if a unit is aiming for the edge of the map and you push it towards the edge of the map. Presumably, it just aims for the same spot. If I push it the other way, it will be aiming for here instead. Right, Alpha Scarab's gonna die. Scarab's gonna die. Alpha Centipede's bead's gonna be have its attack neutralized. And for that to work, Isabel needs to be here. Zepikil, Lauren needs to be here. Yeah. So Zappy Kill has to move first. Zappy Kill. Then Isabel moves. Yoink. And then Rockstar comes up here. We're all bunching up over here as well. Um, and drops a rock there. And we're going to have to... We're going to have to bet on our 30% grid defense to save... This building. It's only a damage one, so it'll only destroy one. I would love to keep our perfect record if we could, but I'm, um, you know, not quite enough options. If only I'd chosen to get that through, zap through buildings mode, that would have been brilliant. Let's see what happens. Building lost 111 casualties. And we lost one power as a result. Okay. Oh dear. This is the last turn. So, all other things aside, we're not getting that time pod. That's quite annoying. We will still get a reactor core if we protect the robotics lab. Uh, what do we have? We have one, two, three... Four attacks need defending? No. Right, the Alpha Centipede we can ignore because it's trying to attack Zappy Kill, and Zappy Kill can just walk out of the way, and then it will just hit these tiles down here. So we can completely ignore the Alpha Centipede. So we have one, two, three, four attacks to neutralize. They're attacking the robot lab. That's attacking the robot lab. That's both bad. Um, we could tank it, as long as they're not sitting on the ice. That's an option. Zappy Kill can't actually get close enough to zap anyone... Uh, right now, without some, some serious... ...action happening with, with Grapple Pie, and I'm not sure that's gonna happen. We may need to... ...tank damage for someone else. Damage one from an ordinary centipede, so we could tank that with anyone. We could tank it here. Well, what's the attack order? Alpha centipede first, then hornets, then the robot, then the centipede. So although I say we could tank the acid damage here, um, that won't kill the robot. It'll be too late to kill the robot. But it would save the building and the robotics lab, at least from that attack not great. We'd probably be better off tanking it here or something. Then at least we still have our rock throwing ability to deploy somewhere where a rock is useful. Four attacks to neutralize, three units to do it with. That means disrupting three attacks or killing three units, or some combination of those two, plus tanking one other attack. The only attack we can tank is the centipede. So we've got to, we've got to tank the centipede's attacks. So we've got to find a spot along here where one of our other units is useful. That might be... It won't be Ganymede, because Ganymede can't get here. If Ganymede could get here and launch a rock there, that would be quite handy. Ganymede could get here and launch the rock. But then it's not in a position to tank, okay? Grapple Pie can't grapple anybody usefully from here, although 
ideal for doing the tanking. I wonder, can can you grapple a time pod? No, we've got to go and sit on the time pod to get it. So we're not getting that time pod no matter what. Uh, how do we do? How do we deal with this hornet? We can't. With this robot in the way, if this robot wasn't there, we could actually drop a rock on the hornet. Um, so that's worth thinking about. We can't get to position to zap that robot. So the only way to move that robot out of the way is to pull it out of the way. And... The only place we can pull it is here, and that's not going to help us either. Oh dear, this is not looking great. I don't think we're going to be able to even defend all these buildings. <sighs> these two are the priorities then. Because they're the bonus objectives. One of those getting hit, one of them getting hit. We can certainly stop one of those, I think. We can drop a rock on this Hornet. We can pull this cannonball out of the way. Wait, Cannonbot attacks, yeah, before the centipede. So we can pull it here, and it will attack that. Chance of resist, and then the Cannonbot will, will block the centipede's attack. Maybe good, maybe bad, but that's possible. Then, Zappy Kill has no Zappy Killing to do. And we're definitely not... Oh, we actually could sit on the ice. We could sit on the ice. We're, we're, we're okay with falling in the water. Um, it was bad for us last game because it left us unable to attack and we got webbed in the water. But this is the last turn, so sitting in the water is no problem. So we could actually pull the robot, then zap the robot, then tank the acid, Drop a rock on this hornet. We would have saved that building. The robotics lab. And the robot factory. And there's one chance... One damage being dealt to one of these. With a chance of resisting. I don't see any way I can even attack this hornet. So I think that's the best I can do. So what's the move order here? Isabel moves there. Grapple Pie moves there. Oh, sorry, Zappy Kill moves here. Ganymede. Well, we can take that attack, but there's absolutely no point. No need to. Ganymede moves here. Ganymede drops a rock. One dead, one attack saved. One attack blocked. Do a yoink. Hands up. And Isabel, I'm sorry. We, I keep doing this to you, but that's the way the yank and lightning work together. And let's... Let's hope the numbers come up right when this hornet attacks the building. Splish. Nope. Power loss. 122 casualties. Ouch. We got acid damage. We took one damage from the attack. And we're inflicted with acid. With its defenses corroded, incoming weapon damage will be dumb doubled. Okay. So acid doesn't do damage per turn, but does double damage if you take damage. So defeats tanking. The Vec have been uh, leaving the area. Region secured. We lost two buildings, which means we lost two power on our power grid. That's not great at all. Um, hopefully we can make that back on subsequent turns. We did defeat both robot factories, so we got two right. We did protect the robotics lab. Um, so we got a power core from it. We did protect the time pod, but we didn't collect it, so we're not going to be able to... We're not going to forget whatever it might have been. Wait, what? Oh. Protecting it alone is sufficient. Oh, well, that's nice. I was not expecting that. I thought we failed to recover it. What do we get? We got a new pilot, Bethany Jones. The mech starts every mission with a shield, and she already has 
a special skill, plus one reactor power, wow. Start with a shield, plus one reactor power, and she hasn't even leveled up to get bonus skills. Bethany, I think I might put you in charge of a mech. You are my new favorite pilot. And we got a reactor core. This is... Uh, you can assign them in the upgrade screen. Great. That is really good. Now... Plus one reactor core. And Lauren gets extra move. And plus three defense. Uh, Isabel is getting plus three defense. And we don't know what the next skill is going to be. Kenobi is getting plus three defense. I don't want to lean on grid defense. Um, but I guess we can't change pilots while we're deployed. Apparently. Oh no, we can. Yeah. Pilots sit in storage. That seems com uncomfortable. It'd be nice storage for weapons and stuff and a lounge or something for the pilots. I don't know. Or at least a barracks. Um... Starting shield, plus one reactor. We'd be down to three move, but we could get building chain. And we got two reactor cores as well. Let's let's think about that. Zappy kill tends to be taking unnecessary damage. Grapple by could do with the shield, but is already armored, so it's better off in that sense. Rockstar probably doesn't need either of those abilities. Oh, this is this is good. However, I'm going to make decisions on this in the next episode because it's uh, been an hour and 15 minutes or so already. So, I'm going to end this episode here. Next mission, we will decide how to spend our cores, where our new pilot Bethany is going to be deployed, in which mech, and... I don't see us doing robotics repair. I think we're going to go straight for Glacier Cliff and find out what these ice storms are all about. So thanks again for watching, and I will... I'm not sure when I'm going to stream the next episode, so I will announce that on Twitter as usual. And see you next time.